on this week, right? Well, it's cold this week. Yeah, it's been all crazy, silly cold. No, it's been dangerous cold. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I want to go back to this. Um, this is my description of House Bill 463, which I call the Criminal Friendly Soft on Crime Catch and Release Experiment with the Public Safety and Security of Our Citizens. And the people that are affected the most, um, as you know, are first of all crime victims, but second of all police. It has changed the way police um, can enforce our laws. Mm -hmm. And so I asked uh, a police officer friend of mine to, who is with something called the Kentucky Peace Officers Association. You ever heard of that? I have. Yeah. Well, I guess those are police officers that are belong to this association from around the state. Um, if he would communicate with them and ask um, them to write and respond about how, what kind of difficulties this soft on crime House Bill 463 has caused them in their duties as police officers and in enforcing the law. And it's been fascinating because he sent me any number of these responses and I'm taking these, I'm going to put these responses one by one in their entirety on our webpage LexingtonProsecutor.com and our Facebook which is Ray the DA I think. Is that right? Abigail? Yeah. And <clears throat> just to describe it and um, and I want to talk a little bit about the, the first one we put on and it has, it came from a, I don't identify the police officers because I don't want to get them jammed up with political types. Mm -hmm. um, but here's a guy that has been a police officer for 25 years and he's, he gives me three areas that are specifically problems that he's encountered. One is drivers who continue to drive after their driver's licenses have been suspended based on a conviction for DUI. The second one is the difficulty of collecting evidence, breathalyzer evidence, from arrested DUI drivers. And the third has to do with um, the ability to enforce theft and breaking into car crimes. And he, here's what he says, virtually every night that I work I make a traffic stop and discover that a driver is driving his or her car with a license been suspended because they were convicted of DUI. Uh, now instead of arresting that driver I have to write him a ticket and lecture them on not driving. More times than not, that person waits for me to leave and then just drives off. He said, last two months, uh, two cases occurred. He said, I left the scene after writing a ticket and told the person not to drive. I waited in the area and as expected, the driver drove off. I stopped the vehicle again after the driver thought I had gone and under House Bill 463, I could still only write him another ticket. <laughs> now, that's, that, that enforcement part is something that you've talked about, but you've talked about it in a different setting. Mm -hmm. And you've talked about what police officers, um, the value of being able to stop and arrest people in, in solving additional crimes. And tell us a little bit about that. Well, I know of several murder cases, a bunch of robbery cases, and God knows how many drug cases that have been made as a result of that stop that you talked about right there. You stop someone for operating on suspended. You suspect it's 3 o'clock in the morning. 
something's not right. You look in the back of the car and you see a pair of uh, latex gloves. You're like, why are there latex gloves sitting in the back seat? You know, in open view. But that's really not enough evidence to continue searching the car because they're just latex gloves, but it just doesn't look right. Well, because that person's operating on suspended, you go ahead and hook them up, put them in jail, which then gives you the obligation and right to, to search that vehicle in the compartment area further. And, and then lo and behold, you find a knife. And then you realize, oh, this guy just left a dumpster over on the north side where he's been cutting a body up. Boom, bingo, that was just an operating on suspended. But police officers were able to use all these laws as tools to dig a little deeper and make a difference, okay? So that, that right there just goes without saying. But that happened every day out there. Police officers solve murders and serious crimes because of contact with the public. If you don't have contact with people, then you're just reactionary. If you're reactionary, cops will tell you we're just report takers. We're going to, sh going, to sh going to show up and let you file a report about what just happened to you. We don't have the ability to stop the crime anymore because one by one, they've taken away the tools that we need in order to do that. And if we're not careful, when we do cross over that line to try to be a little more quote unquote aggressive, then we're accused of profiling or we're, we're going too far. So police officers get in their training now, they get a lot of half the cases before. Well, sorry. When you stop somebody for DUI, driving under the influence for being impaired. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the prosecutor has to be able to prove that the person was under the influence or impaired. Sure. And the way Kentucky has done that, and, and almost every other state, they have what we call an implied consent law. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if, if you're gonna drive in Kentucky, and you have a driver's license, then you are impliedly consenting to subject yourself to a breathalyzer examination if you're stopped for DUI. And the breathalyzer examination measures the amount of alcohol in your blood, and if at a certain point, uh, if it's a .08 or above alcohol content in your blood, you're perceived to be under the influence. And so what's happening now is a person is charged with DUI and can be arrested, right? But then they get their driver's license suspended, mm -hmm. you see. Well, what's happening now, um, under 463, uh, people are just saying, I'm not going to take a breathalyzer exam. They're going to refuse. To, and so as a result, they lose their license, right? But you don't have any evidence then other than just that's, their eyes are that's, watery. And that's exactly them. right. And so the, the risk they take is then continuing to drive without a driver's license. And we've already talked about how when they stop you for not having a driver's license or driving on a suspended license, what happens? They write you a ticket and you keep driving. Mm -hmm. You see, it's just a, it's a, it's a never-ending deal. Yeah, and people know, people that are prolific at these things, they know. Look, and lawyers are telling them. They'll tell you, don't take the test. Mm -hmm. Don't say anything. Mm -hmm. Don't do anything. They'll have no evidence. Well, that's great. You know, whatever. But the, then these people are going around and, and getting killed or killing other people. But, you know, the, the other thing is, if you think of, you talk about DUI suspended, how fair is it? that if, you know, my wife gets pulled over and gets a speeding ticket, you know, she's going to pay that ticket because she's a good citizen, whether she likes it or not, and she understands that that's just the cost of driving and doing business. She was speeding, and she's going to pay her ticket because she doesn't want her license suspended. She don't want the embarrassment of owing a fine that she's not going to pay. So she's going to do the right thing. That's what most citizens are going to do. However, they're the, and used to for the citizens that didn't want to follow along with that, if they didn't pay their ticket, they went to jail. They lost their license or they went to jail. Now, the only people that are paying tickets are the people nice enough to do it. That's, that's where we're at. How fair is that for the law-abiding citizens? Because I'm telling you, there's a certain percentage of people that they're not going to do it, and now if they don't have jail as an incentive or losing the license, they're never going to do it. So police officers feel like they've become tax collectors and mall cops instead of police officers. Oh, They're like, you know, really, I'm not here to collect taxes for the government. I'm here to enforce the law. 
And if you're not going to, if you're telling me you don't want it enforced, then I think I'll go have a cup of coffee. You know, it's really hard to get out of that mentality. And, and that, that's a reality that people don't want to talk about, but it's just the truth. You know, and, and you're hearing that more and more from police officers. They're frustrated. They don't want to have bad attitudes. They didn't become police officers to do that. But, boy, day after day, when you're just inundated on what you're doing wrong and what you can't do and what you shouldn't do, after a while, it's going to get on anybody's nerves. We all have jobs. You know how that is, you know? Let me, let me tell you the last issue, Lee Ray, the difficulty of uh, enforcing theft and property crimes. Um, larceny from auto. No, people don't know what that means. That means breaking into a car and stealing stuff that you leave in your car. That's become a problem in Lexington, but under 463, this catch and release law, it's become a crime wave. Um, and the reason is these people, these people that break into cars and take property, it's worth less than $500, which is most mm -hmm. of those cases, I have no fear of being arrested. I remember a case that you talked about, about the lady in the yellow dress who was, uh, the police found this guy with property that was taken out of her pickup truck. And they went to her door at 2.30 in the morning and said, um, your, is this your property? And she says, yeah, it's in my truck. She says, no, this was taken out of your truck. We found it in this guy's possession. And she says, and you caught it. And they said, yes, we did. And she says, great. Now he's going to jail, right? And the guy says, wrong. The police officer said, wrong. I can only give him a ticket. And she was absolutely outraged. You write this guy a ticket and you let him go probably to this next crime and that's what's going on with these um, these folks these car break-ins have been become so common that most not most but a lot of the victims just don't call the police anymore why because they see giving those people a ticket instead of arresting them is not really enforcing the laws and that's not what they're paying taxes for nor are there being taxes to be told it's your fault because you didn't lock your car. Yeah. And, and you know, that's, you, that's the response you'll hear. That ticks me off. It's like, mm -hmm. listen, we used to live in a community where you didn't have to lock everything up. And now you're telling me that if I become a victim, it's my fault because I didn't lock my car in my driveway. You know? Um, no, that's not the answer. You're right. Sure, I should have locked my car. But I, that's not what I want to hear. Well, I want to know where these people are, why they're not in jail, and what's being done about it. You know, I mean, that should be the response from people, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, it's just, it's, it's but, but the interesting part is that I think that a lot of the police officers that have responded to this Kentucky Peace Officer Association request are realizing this is an opportunity for me to basically vent about the frustration that I'm now facing uh, as a police officer in enforcing the laws. So it's a... Uh, well, and they have to vent anonymously because unfortunately there, there are people that consider that behavior, that them, them speaking their mind to be pushing back. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they can get in trouble for that too. And that's ridiculous. But they'll tell you that. They're like, look, you know, you just do as you're told. But, uh, you know, the people on the street should have input. The officers are out there on the front line. People should care what they think and what they're saying and listen to them. When I put this on Facebook, on, on Ray the DA Facebook, this first one, it was out of the woodwork people came. I mean, we, we've got thousands of people that have read this thing, and, you know, we're getting... Lots and lots and lots of comments. I mean, you've got you got an administrator been sitting in an office for, they haven't been on the street in 15 years, that's uh, that doesn't even want to listen to the police officer on the front line. Say, look, this is not right. The city's going to be overrun. And, you know, that's just outrageous. We'll see you next week on in time.